most welcome this morning for the second day of our Veda. Actually, with preparation, it has become the third day. But uh, it's so extraordinary, so beautiful. But before I speak anything to you, I have to, I have to tell you what I heard this morning from Srila Prabhupada. I was listening to a class of Srila Prabhupada and it just blew my mind how he was explaining that Krishna is the owner of everything. You can't discuss it, my friend. There is no question to be asked. You are born naked. And naked you go from here. No rings, not even your neck beads you will take with you. You go with nothing. All your numbers in a bank are worth nothing. Your houses or whatever you think you have is nothing, nothing. Nothing belongs to you. Number one. And God? Who's God? Well, first of all, everything belongs to Him. That is one of His qualifications as being the most opulent, as being the master, the master mind and the master creator, the master provider. If you say, I don't know God, hey stupid, have you not seen a plate you just ate yesterday? The air you are breathing? The water you are taking a shower with? <coughs> the earth you are stepping on? Is that yours? Are you entitled for this? Some master provider is giving you everything. It's such an extraordinary, beautiful way. So lovingly. Come on. It's too much. It's too beautiful. How the Lord is providing for everyone. He is the unquestioned, uncompared master provider. And you who are being provided for can see him through what he is providing for you. Is that so difficult? Are you so ungrateful that you receive everything you say? Well, natural. I guess somebody owed it to me. It's being provided costlessly because I don't know the cause. What cause God may have to provide anything to me? Why he has given houses to you, Krishna Keta? Why he has been so kind with you to give you children, to give you a life companion? He has provided everything, everything, everything. Everything. So he's the master provider. That's, the class was so good. I just have to repeat it, you know. I would let you go out without a morning treasure. Then Prabhupada says, now look at God. God has so many temples. The temples of God are amazing. Radha Govinda Mantir. What a Mantir in Vrindavan. The mandirs of Lord Krishna in South India, the fortresses. The Lord is in the middle and 
there's one wall and another wall and another wall. <coughs> and he gets provided everything. Speak, virtually speaking, millions of dollars are being given to the Lord in the form of jewels and gold to provide for other things like education, whatever necessity are there. The, the temples sustain universities. And it's amazing, amazing. It is a concept which is unknown and unheard of, practically speaking. So the devotees, in response to their Lord, they're making beautiful temples. Also in this country, you make churches. Some of these churches are very beautiful. I don't like to talk about churches so much because I know many of them have been built by slaves. <laughs> so, it's not so good. South America, slaves. They had so many slaves. But the architects were good and they were making temples for the Lord. So they could have done anything else, but they also made temples. And then, South America, the pyramids. Those pyramids they made for God, or take Egypt. What they did for the Lord. In South India, in Tanjur, there's one temple of Lord Shiva. They have a 200 ton rock on the top of that temple at a height of more than 56 meters and this one rock is carved entirely beautifully. How can you get a 200 ton rock to that height? No brain of our modern architecture can lift such a rock. They have no way. People have tried to think about it. How did they do it? How did they do it? The only idea they came up with was properly they have made a ramp for many kilometers and pushed it up with 200 elephants or something. Can you make it? Imagine the ramp you have to make so that 200 elephants can push up a rock. I mean, what the heck? What was happening to that? And that only for the worship. <coughs> Of a Shiva Linda, of Lord Shiva, Gopeshwa. So, for the Lord, temples have been built everywhere in the world, practically. Sometimes they are lost in the jungles. In Guatemala, they just found one of the biggest temple complex of the Maya culture they never thought could exist. And even Lord Krishna's temple in Angkor Wat, in Yashodapura, now Cambodia. Those temples of Angkor Wat, they blow your mind. At least they didn't make one temple for the Lord. Angkor Wat has over 60 of those opulent temples in, this, in that region. So, I mean, it's very difficult to imagine what motivated the people in this world in whatever culture it was. We are not comparing cultures here and we are not comparing architectures here. We are just rec recognizing amazing, unbelievable efforts made by devotees for the Lord. Yes, my Lord, please, my Lord, accept this temple and let us worship Thee. Let us sing Your glories, write about them in transcendental books, recite them, dance for You. Like we in India, we have so many temple dances, one more beautiful than the other. All this we have done for you. But who is God? Hmm? Who is that master provider, my friend? <laughs> he is the one who speaks in Bhagavad Gita. Patram <laughs> Pushpam Phalam 
Yam Yogi Patya Pradashati. Offer me with love and devotion. A fruit, a flower, a leaf, a little water. God, the owner of everything, the master provider who has inspired the most amazing temples and shrines in the world ever, ever, and without any competition. He's begging for a little fruit and a little flower from you. Isn't that far out? What is he begging? He is not in need of every anything. Is Atma Rama Chabuna Yoni Grantia Purukrame Kurvantia Pukin Bhaktivita Taruni. He is totally self-sufficient. Everything within him is fullness and fullness and fullness. And still he is longing for your love. Oh. He's longing for our love. Is it crazy or what is this? The Lord of Lords, the lover of lovers, the knower of knowers, the renounced of the renounced, the self-manifest, the unbelievable, who's known as Radha Maman, Radha Govinda Ji, he's known in other culture, Kaku Senangwa, Ati Seneca, he's always present in the mind of people, in such a most venerable thing, like when they brought the indigenous people to New York for the World Indigenous Day. So that's in the United Nations, so bring a few chiefs from around the world and they take them in the room and they all tell us and give us some of your wisdom, tell us something you want to tell us. <coughs> so they, they, uh, they all gave their talk and then afterwards they said, well, now we show you something of our culture. Uh -huh. So they took him and took the natives and they took him to the Empire State Building. You know, this is one of the tallest buildings in New York. And he said, this is what we have done. And some of the natives, they were looking at each other and laughing. <coughs> laughing like, <laughs> I mean, as if they know everything. Sometimes it seems like they do know everything. Anyway, so the guy, he was irritated and said, Why are you laughing? He says, You are showing this little building here, our temples, they are thousands of meters high. The Sierra Nevada is the heart of the Mother Earth. It has many temples in it, and there are snow peaks going up, full of caves and places. And this is all the Lord's temple for them. They see with other eyes, and for them the sun is God's manifestation. Plus for us also, because without the sun, where would we be? <laughs> so, they say, you know, this is stupid little building you're showing us like you have done something big. Like you have some great culture. So it's humbling. The, the, seeing God's position of begging for a flower and a fruit is humbling. Why are you asking me for a flower and a fruit? And don't forget that flower and that fruit and that little water does not belong to you, it belongs to him also. So he's asking you for your, he says, Bhaktiyama Abhichadati. You have to offer it with love. Only with Bhakti. Patam Fushma Pushma Patam Toyam Yogi Bhaktiya Abhadashit. I just love you. I don't need your buildings, silly buildings. I don't need your money. I just want your love, my friend. You 
true love, your deepest and most sweetest love you have there inside of you, which I left there. I left this love inside of you. Krishna Surya Haya, Krishna's light, he has left this light inside of us. Maya is darkness. When we turn away from Krishna, we go into darkness. We lose so much in the darkness of ignorance. We waste our time in this material world. Krishna comes to us to beg us for a little water. Like a sannyasi sometimes goes from door to door to beg. Not because the sannyasis are in need and they want to have an easy living by begging from door to door, doing madhukai. No. Sannyasi coming to your door to share some of his insights of life and that to people ask, Oh, there was a sannyasi at our door. What did he say? He said, Atapa Brahma Gikyasa, my friend, you were form of life and meant to search for self-realization. Mm. Oh Krishna Obinda, Adi Murali in that Narayana Vasudevaya. Then what did he do? Then he was singing. Mm. And he was singing, he touched our heart. And then he took a little milk and left. Oh, wow, wow, this is wonderful. <laughs> How such a person can live who will come to your door begging and taking little milk and leaves? So Krishna himself comes as a beggar? Now if you're smart, you will say, Krishna, wait a second. You're not begging at my door. I'm making in my house a temple room for you. And I'm going to get some nice deities from India and I'm going to install them there because hardly any other country can produce deities <laughs> that, that science table not know. Some special artists maybe, but in India it's very, it's very normal to get some beautiful deities for your home. And then you make a place in your house where Krishna is uh, residing the supreme joy. And you make sure through that presence of Krishna in your house, this Pata Pushpa Phalam Tulya goes on every day. You offer this love and devotion, your food to the Lord, and then you invite others. That is the meaning of Prashadam. Prashadam is not mercy for you, but Prashadam is mercy to be distributed. That's why the householder, before he eats, He's supposed to go to the door of his house, open the door, and says, the prashadam is ready. Anybody hungry out here? And if somebody comes, he's fed the first plate. He's getting first. That was really culture. When I hear that, I start crying. I say, that's the, that's the society I want to be part of. I don't want to be part of this that nonsense, uh, horrible five-star hotels with ten dead animals at least on the on the buffet and people going around and just like cutting it to pieces and eating a lot. I don't want to be part of that. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I want to be part of the Prashada world. The world of distributing mercy. And there is the Lord. He's very equipoised. He's completely self-sufficient. But then he opens his mouth and says, Can you please give me a little fruit, a little flower, a leaf? Can you be so kind of offer this with love to me? 
I'm so love hungry. But I'm not love hungry for any love. I'm love hungry for your pure touch your heart with your hand. Put your hand on your heart. He said, I beg your love. Don't you feel ashamed that you have not given any love to him? You have not given any, any special care, any special effort to please him. He's begging for your love. And then he asks, give my love to others through your heart. That is the Krishna country movement. That is what it's all about. Nothing more, nothing, nothing less. <clears throat> we don't need gossips. <coughs> we don't need temple politics or other mundane politics. We don't need <coughs> we don't need arms fairs. We don't need mobile phones. We don't need the glamorous society of Las Vegas. We don't need all that stupidity. We don't need Mickey Mouse. <laughs> We need to give our love to the master provider of everything. And we need that his love will go through our means, through our efforts, through our muscles, <coughs> through our services, and awaken the world to that universal love he is propagating. Om Salve Bhavantu Shukhina Salve Shantu Niramaya Salve Badrani Pashyatu Maka Chittu Kapapavet What is the Lord's divine order? Nobody should be unhappy. It is our job to make others happy. Nobody should be diseased. It is our job to teach our children to live healthy. The children on the computer will not be very healthy in the long run. Everybody has a right and a need for his own conviction. Salve Padrani Pashyam too. Everybody needs to have his own criteria of love. Maka chit to Kavapavet. And better make sure that nobody whatsoever and ever is put into misery by me. By me. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. <clears throat> that is Prabhupada's philosophy. That is Sanatan Dharma philosophy. <laughs> Prabhupada is not different from Sanatan Dharma. He's giver of Sanatana Dharma in his Krishna conscious movement. But he is not separate, he is not different. He is Sanatana Dharma personified. And so is Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayama and Srila Bhakti Vaiva Puimana and Srila Bhakti Pranyam Keshava Maharaj. They are all personifications of 
serving the Supreme Personality without any ulterior motives. They were all teaching love, love, and love. One time I spoke with Bhaktivedanta Narayanaj. Some of his disciples had created confusion by fanatic preaching. And I went to tell him what happened. And he won't believe how he reacted. He turned around, oh Maharaj, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. He wanted him to apologize to me, but he apologized twice, right? He went, oh, no, 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 I don't want this. So the Holy should preach to make everybody happy, that's all. If you make people happy with your preaching, welcome. So, <clears throat> but you see, because we are preaching one philosophy, we are practicing one philosophy. And that philosophy has no space for sectarianism. It's impossible. Krishna wants everybody to be happy. So how can there be sectarianism? If you are as a preacher supposed to make everybody happy? And when the devotees preach successfully, then there is a lot of animals happy because people become vegetarian. So that means all the animals say have no more enemy in this person. Om Salve Bhavantu Shukina. What a shloka. And the scriptures are just full of shlokas like that. It's not like one. Hinduism is not one shloka. Hinduism is a Unbelievable treasure <laughs> of divine instructions to uplift humanity to the highest state of consciousness. And then to make small temples, big temples, high non temples. Divine lecture temples. If you anywhere you speak about God, God will be there. That is confirmed in the scriptures. Krishna, Krishna says, I am not in Vaikuntha. I am not in the heart of the yogi doing all kinds of severe austerities. No, I'm not there. I am there when my devotees come together, sit and speak about my glory. There I am. He's only present. He can be anywhere. But one thing is he is everywhere and something else is where he wants to be. <laughs> so in his, in his supreme power, he's everywhere. But in his heart, he swears his devotees speak his glory and make divine plans. I want to say this one thing to you, my friends, that to chant Hare Krishna is so nice, to hear the Bhagavatam is so nice, to worship the deity is so nice, to eat prasad is also so nice. But there's something even nicer. This when you sit together with other devotees and you raise the question, what are we going to do for Krishna's glories to be spread? For example, in Alicant, our Krishna Dasacharya, he is a very inspired artist devotee. So not only he sits on the table and thinks what to do with Krishna. No, for Krishna he calls on the community and says, you can play the piano, you can play the guitar, 
you can do the dancing, and now we are making one drama. And this drama performance, which he has made already few times, incredible drama performance, he puts international theater and gets all the people and he's te teaching the Vedic philosophy through drama, through flamenco, unbelievable things. I'm just giving an example. That's what Krishna loves. When the devotees come together and think, how are we going to do something? Small, medium or large, doesn't matter. How do we do something? How do we form a university of ancient wisdom? That's a big undertaking. This book, Ramayana, was just published in Colombia by the University of Ancient Wisdom. And what we do, especially in Colombia or in that program, is to present the ancient wisdom of the entire world together, rather than to only present one thing against the other or in isolation of everything else. We present how the Lord has revealed himself over the years, over the millions of years in so many ways to so many people with a congruent message. Love. Love everybody. We are one family, the Lord's family, that has been known to the Anwakus to the Kokis, that has been known to the Mapuches. Maybe you have heard about the Mapuches. The Mapuches, they the South Chilean and South Argentine natives. They were living, their main food were pine nuts. And they were living there happily for the who knows how many thousands and thousands and thousands of years, nobody knows. They believe in the divine God and Goddess as the original creator. They have never gone out of their way to attack others and to do anything. No, even though the Mapuches are very strong people, agriculture people, some beautiful characters. If you go to Chile today, they call them terrorists. <laughs> Can you believe that? They are treated like terrorists because they don't want their trees to be cut where they are eating the pine from. Because so many, you know that, colonialist behavior today, not 500 years ago, forget about these guys, even today our colonialist world politics, they're totally anti-human, they're anti-original natural laws and protection, no, they're totally, so therefore, when we say, oh, salve bhavantu shukina, and the people say, the South Africa say, what? Who's saying that? Oh, they're saying that in India. So now we're having a world prayer. A world prayer coming to the Kumbha Mela, where all the people from all the natives, people around the world, will be praying together for Mother Earth. I don't know who's going to listen. But I hope you are going to be listening and taking it to heart. They are not going to India for tourism. They are going there for the highest concern of Mother Earth. And that is the 
religion of the sages and the saints, whether they're from India or they're from other parts of the world. Because before the world was not so well connected to our awareness, but still the wisdom was flowing around, you know, the temples in South India and the temples in Central America, the mind culture, they look almost identical. Almost, if you put them next to it, it looks like the architect passed over the blueprint to that, uh, so that they can make one too. And that's, I mean, if we go into it, the original history <coughs> of ancient wisdom, do you read, want to read it? This Ramayana has a whole description of the ancient wisdom. So this is a project. I was just showing you how you make a project. And Krishna Kirtan knows that, that how difficult it is to make a project. Because you try, you try, you have to get some help who wants to be part of it. And you do everything, you give out prasadam, you, you try. Madhati also knows the Czech Republic, a pioneer there to, to get something going for Lord Chaitanya. Slowly, slowly over the years, it's one, two, three, four, five friends. I believe what you say, let's do something together. Swedish Yatra, such a struggle to really become. I mean, what, what I mean? The nicest thing in the world is to be together with five, six devotees and speak about Krishna and do things. It's not quantity. We are into quality of association. We exclusively in that, but quality does not deny quantity, please. It's not prohibited. Like we are, this mela is almost getting to quantity. So, of course, and we have to make intensive work, intensive feedback, like practically, in order to get a real connection with somebody, you have to first plug in with him. Oh, so who are you? Italy. Wow. You study this, you do this, like this, and then you start feeling back, you know, like you uh, putting your heart discs inside. Oh, yeah, 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 this is this one. And, wow, this is going on. And then finally, after you have this personal exchange with somebody quite deep, Presenters, like in form of lectures, 
Almost all of you have that ability. How many of you have great cooking ability? Many of you. So, is it just amazing, amazing, and amazing again? How much treasures are here amongst you? But when you just come here, you don't know that. Just by looking at somebody, you don't know what they have, what they know, what they can do. And we are trying to give in a few days people chance to exhibit, to show something. Ansa Prima brought his books, which he wrote for spreading Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Krishna the Skaviraj brought his new ideas of preaching in Lakomela, the little Godrum island in the Canaries. Some little, little, little amazing paradise where the devotees are now having a retreat farm where you can go and make retreats and help this community develop. Plus, they have a medical holistic center. How many square meters we have there? 150. Totally? Yeah. 150 square meters in the entrance of San Sebastian. Just as you come off the boat, there it is, the Divine Medical Center of Holistic Healing. And Prashad very soon will also be served there. So, such amazing things. You know, can imagine an island like this with Krishna present there, full of plants. And that's not only one, you jump over to Mallorca. And there's a whole thing going on. They have devotees of houses and preaching projects and this and that and the Mataji Ashram. Amazing. And the Canary Island is not the only thing that you go to Grand Canaria and that's where is Krishna. Mm. <laughs> he was in the sauna last night. <laughs> representing another island of the Canaries, uh, so where the preaching is going on. And then there's the devotees also in La Palma. Most amazing. You just spent days there. He was staying in Krishna's private cave in La Palma. He was staying there doing meditation for several days about what to do in life. And then he came out and became a Mahabharata. Uh, expert to preserve the Vedic knowledge. And then in Gran, in Fort Aventura, there's also devotees. You said, what is the plan of Krishna in the Canary Islands? Well, something is there. Otherwise, the devotees would not be there. So, what I'm just trying to point out, when Krishna wants something from us. He wants us to come together and make plans. What can you do for the University of Ancient Wisdom? That what you do, this we will use. It's a very nice research. It will not, be, not go in vain. Whoever is interested in that, you know, sometimes, especially in the Mahabharata and what you have researched, it's not so interesting, but it is interesting that it exists, that it was done, that this happened, that this vision was there. Because Prabhupada said sometimes when he presented Nectar of Devotion, he says, I do not expect you to understand what I'm explaining here, all the rasas and feelings of Krishna. I'm just presenting them to you so that you know that such things exist. So a little bit, I feel like that when I see all the information. Yeah, such things exist, and we think that we know. Just amazing information about the times of Krishna. Krishna was there. Arjuna was there. Judas was there. 
Bishma was there. That, can you imagine? What kind of a concept these people had? So, my time is coming to an end this morning. And I'm very sad about that. Because when it starts flowing, you know, there's so much to say. And I haven't even opened my Bhagavatam today. So before I give this class, I will read our shloka of today. It's very important. Huh? Keep to the scriptures. Dharma Svanushtita Pulsan Vishvakshena Katha Suja Not Padayet Jati Ratim Shrama Eva Ikevalam Any spiritual practice and occupational duties that do not inspire attraction for Harikata, the narrations of Sri Krishna, are only a waste of time. <laughs> I repeat, any spiritual practice and occupational duties that do not inspire attraction for Harikata, the narration of Sri Krishna, are only a waste of time. Now think about that, Sri Bhagavatam is so amazing, you know. You may do business, you may do art, you may do duties, devotional duties, but if inside your heart no attraction grows to listen about the Lord of Love, you're wasting your time. You're just on some ego trip. You're at protecting animals, like our Jalikanda forest in Czech Republic. But if you never have a desire to listen to Harikata speaking about Krishna, even protecting animals are a waste of time. You may do something like uh, having a big political party of improving, like the World Conscious Pact, we are trying to help emergencies where people are losing their land or they are oppressed. But if you are involved in that, but you have no desire to know about Krishna behind the Lord, you are wasting time. Your life is a precious gift. That's Bhagavatam, first canto. Your life is a precious gift. If what you do doesn't bring about some attraction to hear about Krishna and to glorify Him, you're wasting your time. So I don't know how it happened, but for some strange reason, which was not my idea, we are visiting Schloss Schwannenberg or something like that. Schwanstein. We are visiting this place today to take some Krishna there and to associate with each other. I mean, it's an amazing phenomena of human endeavor. Royal madness, I would call it, rather. But for some reason we are going there. I'm sure we have some business there because I personally have no business there. So my Lord must have some business there. Like yesterday he had some business in the snow. No? <laughs> so, but we are going there today for coming more closer to each other, talking to each other and getting ideas because then tomorrow the seminary starts so we will study how to do more things together or to just help each other or to just admire what the others are doing. Because Anybody who does anything for Krishna, anywhere I go around, it's so admirable. So amazingly admirable. Really. And Yogi Adityanath is admirable. <laughs> He's he 
comes from a sudden background and became the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. And he's trying to put some sanity into that country based on the wisdom he received from his yogic tradition. It's something very amazing. And I've met some people. I've met Ram, Ram Dev Baba. I've met uh, his doctor, his doctor site, Bal Krishna. I met these people. They are not only talking, they are living like yogis. They're still going on. They have not become opulent enjoyers of this material world because now they have access to such things. So, spiritual energy is flowing into many directions. We have to be very keen and very aware. And attraction to the Lord's glorification. One of the greatest joys given to me of course, first there was a very big festivity in Ayodhya for Ram Naomi, and then there was a great celebration of Holi in Barshana. And that celebration of Holi was conducted by the chief minister, who is actually former Shiva Sampradaya, in his background, he's a Shiva devotee, but he's universally spreading Sanatana Dharma, and this shows different new energies are floating around there. Something new is happening. That people are becoming aware of Brajmanda. Brajmanda is the top place, the place of a revival of spiritual consciousness. Anyway, I also want to say valiant, welcome to the devotees who just came a little late, like Miriam just came yesterday, and uh, and those who are coming to this mela, just wonderful. I thank you so much. And now Archie has something to announce to you, though there's no time for questions really today at this moment, but you can ask me all the way, all around Schloss Schwanstein, or wherever we're going to be there today. Now, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Parampara Ki all great spiritual masters of Mahaprabhu's spiritual teachings Ki Jai.